And thank you for coming to this session and also welcome online friends. Um, today we are going to talk about how to improve LLM-based applications with fallback mechanisms. So let's start. Uh, first about me, my name is Bilge. I work as a developer relations engineer at DeepSet. Uh, my work mainly goes around our open source LLM framework, Haystack. I am coming from Istanbul, Turkey. I live in Istanbul. And fun fact about me, I love Latin music and dances. Uh, so I am on social media. If you are on Twitter or X, uh, and if you have a LinkedIn account, you can follow me and let's connect there. Um, here's today's agenda. First, I'll explain you what retrieval augmented generation is. Then I'll make a brief introduction to Haystack. Uh, by using Haystack, we'll implement some fallback mechanisms to our LLM application. And in the end, I will we'll be answering your questions. So let's start. Uh, but sorry for that, I have a little bit of cold, so I will be having some like, stops between slides. Um, like, give it a read. How many of you has used this tool before? The tool that you're seeing on the screen. <laughs> cool. How many of you has at least seen this but haven't used it before? Okay. okay. Apparently, everybody who saw that used it before. So, uh, this is a very famous application that has an LLM running behind. Uh, LLMs are really cool. They can do very cool stuff, but they don't know about Taylor Swift's latest album, so they can be a disappointing sometimes. Uh, just for your information, the Tortured Poets Department album is a new album of Taylor Swift that, that was released last Friday. So it's okay if you don't know about it as well. <laughs> um, but we came up with a solution to this sort of problem, and the solution is called Retrieval Augmented Degeneration. And what we do with this method is basically, instead of just providing the query to our LLM, we provide some instructions, some context, and then the query. And with these, this type of prompt, our LLM is, uh, will become capable of answering the question. So if I were to ask the same question to my LLM using the same example, I will be first saying that please answer the following query, giving the documents. Then I will be providing some relevant documents in the blue, and then I will be asking the same question. Then our LLM would be capable of understanding and generating the answer that is Taylor Swift's latest album, and it will be also giving some more information about that. Cool, right? <laughs> Taylor approves that. That's great, but how do we build such a system? Um, this is where Haystack comes into play. Yeah, Haystack is an open source framework for, for building production ready LLM applications. It lets you quickly try out the latest AI models while being very flexible and easy to use. It has two main building blocks, components and pipelines. Components are the smallest unit. They can do one thing, but they can do very well. And by connecting components to each other, we form the pipelines. Uh, but the pipelines in Haystack is a directed cyclic graph. So it means that you can have loops in the pipelines. You can have branches, and you can even merge those branches. So they are, they are very customizable and very flexible. And Haystack comes with a lot of components that supports you along the way as you build your LLM application. But if you think that your use case is a very custom thing, you can build your own custom component and plug into your pipeline so you don't need to worry about having like support for everything. And um, if you understood the idea behind Haystack pipelines, let's see how we can build a rack system with Haystack. Uh, this is the overview of a RAG pipeline implemented with Haystack. This is a very minimal example, uh, but you can, of course, customize it as you want. Uh, let's go over it together. Uh, first component that you would put into your pipeline is usually an embedder. And as the name states, it's a component that generates the query embedding. And we have a large selection of support here. We have Hugging Face, Mistral Models, Gina, Azure, and if you want to host your own embedding model, you can also use Olama, Lama CPP, or VLLM with Haystack. Next step is a Retriever. I just, let's assume that you already have your own data in your document store, and your document store can be one of the, list of, one of the ones that are listed above. Uh, 
um, what we do is we get the query embedding, retriever sends it to the document store and gets the relevant data from your database. And the next step is the prompt builder. This component takes the relevant documents and the query and renders the prompt for you. And the generator takes that prompt and sends it to your generative model uh, or your LLM. And again, we have a large selection of model support here. Uh, you can use any closed source models or if you want to host your own model, you can, even, you can again do that with, um, uh, with all Llama, Llama CPP, et cetera. And then, of course, <coughs> in the end, hopefully, you'll get an answer. And this is the code uh, that you would need to write for a rag pipeline like this. First, I initialize a retriever. Then I initialize my text embedder. But the, I think the most thing that you need to focus the most important thing that you need to focus here is the prompt template. We are using we are using Jinja syntax in our prompt template. So it means that you can have for loops, you can have if clauses, and this ability helps you even further customize your prompts. And we pass that prompt template to our prompt builder, and then as an LLM, I chose here the OpenAI generator with GPT 3.5. But yeah, it can be any model that you support or that you want to use in your pipeline. And okay, the components are here. Let's also let's now add them to our pipeline. Okay, one by one, we add our components to our pipeline, and as a second step, we connect them to each other. As I said, it's a directed graph, so we need to define like which edge goes to which uh, component. And then I run my pipeline with the query, and in return, I get an answer. So congratulations, you have built your first RAG application. Um, your system now uh, can get the relevant data from your document store and generate the answers based on, uh, based on the relevant documents. Uh, but what if you ask a question that doesn't have an answer in your document store, such as, when is Taylor Swift's next concert? In this case, what you usually get is, um, you get an answer that's nice, like LLMs are capable of understanding that the information is not found in the given documents, uh, but that's the most they can do. And it's not usually the best way to show your users that you don't know the answer. And when this is the case, what would you do? You will implement a fallback mechanisms. And these fallback mechanisms can act as, uh, as your safety net and prevent your application to return no results in a more systematic way. All right, so this is um, an example of a fallback in a pipeline. So here, uh, what you can do as a first step is to connect a conditional router to your RAG pipeline. And this conditional router is a component that routes your data through different paths down the pipeline by evaluating the conditions that you specify. So here, uh, what conditional router does is um, it checks the response coming from the LLM and detects if it's an answer, like if the answer is found in the relevant documents, then it returns it then it returns that to the user. But if it thinks that the answer is not found in the given documents, then it directs your query to web. But to be able to work with this type of pipeline, there are some configurations that we make in our RAG pipeline. So let's see what we need to change there. So remember the prompt template that I showed you before. It was basically an instruction, context, and the query. But if you want to have a back fallback pipeline, uh, we need to have one more instruction in our prompt, which is uh, we need to say our LLM to return no answer if the answer is not contained within the given documents. This is important because, as I said, like LLMs can understand that the answer is not found, but if they just put it in a human-like way, it's very hard for us to detect that the answer is not found in the reply. So after uh, adding this instruction to our, template, to our template, we assume that our LLM will return no answer instead of saying, like, I don't know the answer. And at this step, the conditional router can 
okay, maybe let me put it that way. Uh, in condition narrator, you can define at least uh, one condition or even more if you want to. So in the routes array, you see there are two dictionaries. The first dictionary, uh, first dictionary that we have is the first condition. And in the condition key, you see that no answer in replies. It means that if the LLM returns no answer as a reply, um, we'll output the query and we will direct the data to output name go to web search. And as the second, and the second condition is basically the else, uh, else of this if, if clause. It basically checks the other ways, and if the if the answer is found in the replies, it says like, okay, everything is fine. I can return the answer coming from the LLM as the answer to my users. Um, so this is now the new version of our pipeline. The three dots in, uh, on the left represents the RAG pipeline that we have. Then we connected our conditional router that can detect whether it should go to the, that it should return uh, the reply as an answer or not. And if it detects that it should go, we should make a web search, we, it sends the query to our server the web search component. This is a component that can accept the query and uses that query to make a web search like we do with Google. And then it returns some relevant information retrieved from web. And the, ba and the rest is basically a, like a rag pipeline. We have the relevant documents, we have the query, our prompt builder can again generate the prompt and the generator will hopefully generate the answer. So in an example like this, we can expect that uh, when we ask the when is Taylor Swift next concert is, uh, we can easily get the answer coming from the web with the very latest information. Uh, but this is ac actually n not the only way to implement a system like that. So you don't have to fall back to web search. You can also use other type of sources such as like Notion, Google Drive, or your Slack. And if you found this interesting, we have a tutorial that explains this step by step uh, and helps you uh, as you build your uh, pipeline with, uh, uh, with uh, fallback mechanisms. And uh, I have a lot of time, so it means that I'll have more questions. I'll have I will be able to answer more questions. But uh, we have a meetup tomorrow. If you found if you find LLMs and Gen AI interesting, and if you like to build your own LLM application, you might be interested in this meetup as well. Um, so it's it's at 6 p.m. We like to see all. We like to see you all there. And here are the some materials that I used in this presentation. Um, we have a calendar on Luma. So if you would like to know about the events that we host in person or online, we put all of them there. We have a Twitter account and we have a YouTube channel for Haystack, so uh, there will be a lot of materials there. Uh, as I said, Haystack is an open source LLM framework, so it has a GitHub repo. Go and check that out and uh, give it a try. Uh, Haystack website is the QR code in the middle, and we also have a Discord community with more than 2,000 uh, members. Uh, we talk about LLMs and AI in general there, so make sure you're also joined. And if you want to find me on social media, here are my uh, social media accounts. Um, I guess that's it. If you have any more, if you have questions, I can answer them now. Thank you for your talk. I do have uh, two questions specifically about Haystack. All right. One of it is how I would put them both together. How does the Haystack compare to Longchain and why should prefer it? And the other one, does Haystack support Asyncio to enroll system through? Okay. Um, first, I'll, I'll answer the first question. Uh, I am a very advanced Haystack user, to be honest with you, uh, but I am not a very advanced Langchain user. So probably it's, it will not, like I, it's not, it wouldn't be very fair for me to compare these uh, both frameworks because I think Haystack is cool. And <laughs> uh, but if I need to make a very, uh, if I 
we need to make a, a very good answer here. Uh, I think Haystack is more modular. Uh, so if you want to build something custom, Haystack is there for you. If you want to have a very flexible pipeline, Haystack is there. Um, so maybe I can go back quickly here. Sorry, yeah. So uh, basically the components, I think they are, like, they are small, so you need to do a lot of stuff when you're building your rack pipeline, but it's clear. So if you want to customize this pipeline even further, you know what you want to do. Um, I think this is like the, this is my answer to this, but if they want to have a chat afterwards, I am happy to give more examples uh, for Langchain. And for async AO, uh, the thing I can say is we are working on the async support. Uh, actually, we, have, we are going to host an office hour on our Discord channel, so I can go back to here. Yeah, uh, if you join our Discord community, there will be a discussion about that next week on Discord. Make sure that you join if you want to know how you can build a sync pipelines and the, how you can support a sync IO with Haystack. And how does the fallback exactly retrieve the answer from the internet? How do you exactly get the context from the thousand plus search results? Um, can you repeat the last part of the question? Mm -hmm. How do you get the context from the thousand plus search results? Okay, so we, the, the component that we have, yeah, so for the web search is using an API behind, so you can select how many results that you want to retrieve. And probably if you go to Google search, like if you are making a Google search, you're just taking a look at the first 10 results, right? You're not like going to the 100 page and try to find the relevant information there. So, but you, there, there are some metrics, like there are some parameters that you can use as you retrieve data. And like, it's very similar to web search, like uh, I can make this comparison. <laughs> Why don't you use LLM's functions calling to solve this problem? Which problem? Mm, okay. Maybe. Anyone who asked the questions want to formulate better? Yeah, you, you can uh, use uh, function calling within some LLMs um, to uh, create functions that uh, could solve a problem like searching on the web for you. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, you would need to uh, like you would have two functions for that, right? So one for you to check your data and one for you one to check web. Uh, yeah, that could be an option. Uh, it's I think like there's nothing there would be nothing problematic about that. But one thing that that might not be working is not every LLM supports function calling. So if you want to use an open source model that you host yourself that doesn't have this capability, that th this is a limitation. But yeah, that's a valid point. Okay, thank you. Why not to have uh, to use a chain of thought mechanism in start uh, to decide if it needs to use web info, DB data, or other tools to answer instead of uh, adding an if case? Uh, if I got this question correctly, it's again like idea of an agent. And again, yeah, this is not, this is an other s alternative solution, but again, yeah, are not all LLMs can have this agent behavior. Yeah, you can try to prompt them with a chain of thoughts, but uh, some LLMs can only say that I cannot find the answer. They are not very capable of having that agent agentic behavior. So this would be, again, the limitation here. If you want to have a maybe a smaller model, maybe you're hosting an open source one, uh, so this will not work. But yeah, if you, if you want to use yeah, GPT 3.5 or GPT 4, yeah, that, that, that will work, definitely. Um, how would you deal with deciding when to use reg and when it's not necessary? Like uh, an example it gives, a chatbot uh, that user asks to summarize the last message, or is that a reg needed? Um, to summarize the last message, yeah, the, the idea behind retrieval augmented generation is, like as the name sounds, you retrieve some data and then you augment it to your prompt to generate something. But if you want to do a summarization task for for one document, or I don't know, like the documents that you know, then you don't need to do retrieval. So what you just need to do is to put that into your prompt and generate the answer. So I wouldn't say that 
um, you wouldn't need a retrieval augmented generation for that, but you would need to inject uh, the documents to your prompt. Um, so that would be not the best use case for RAG. Um, does Haystack has a SDK for Vertex AI? Yes, um, I think I have the, I thought I put the logo here. Okay, yeah, it's, it says Gemini, but yeah, uh, we have support for Vertex AI model, so we have that uh, support for in Haystack. Um, how can you measure how reliable is uh, to let the LLM decide whether the answer it's not in the context? Ooh, good question. Um, yeah, we have model-based evaluation frameworks, uh, evaluators in Haystack. That could be one way to check that. But I haven't uh, checked, like I didn't have any, I didn't make any evaluation here, at least, at least for this example. So I cannot come up with the exact numbers. Uh, but yeah, it would be an interesting thing to test with the, uh, with the model-based evaluators in Nextac. <laughs> um, Other than web search, what other fallback mechanisms are supported? Uh, could you repeat that, sorry? Other than web search, which other fallback mechanisms are supported? Uh, um, if I go back here, this is basically, and this, this can be anything that you will hear for, um, Actually, like, uh, let me think another fallback mechanism. You can, oh, maybe what you can do is, especially if you are, um, let's say that you want to generate a structured uh, output. So you want to extract a structured output with your LLM, but your LLM isn't, isn't doing this very well. So what would you do? I have extra slides, so maybe I can show you that. So. Um, let's imagine that your generator is not capable well, is not capable of extracting in the right way. And what would you what you would do is to have an output validator that checks if if it's working for you, if the generated output is working for you or not. And what would you in that case is if the output validator says that no, this is not in the right format. Mm, try that again, you send the invalid replies and the error message back to the prompt builder, and prompt builder tries that again uh, with the generator and with the new prompt, of course. So this is an alternative fallback mechanism, uh, and it is possible with the looping mechanism that we have in Haystack pipelines. So uh, you can also give it a try, but this is very use case specific. Like, um, they can write me on Discord about their use case for fallback mechanisms, and we can try to come up with the solution with Haystack. I have another question about the prompt. Uh, does Haystack help dealing with prompts with too many tokens? Um, with too many tokens, like like cut off, like basically, I don't understand this question exactly. But can you read that again? I deleted, but. Is <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we don't have that um, because the prompt builder doesn't know which model you are using, actually. Uh, so it cannot decide whether it should stop the prompt there. But uh, yeah, you should keep an eye on that and try to add only the, uh, the relevant context uh, by staying in the context limit. Um, yeah. How can you avoid the infinite, infinite no loop when you're yeah, we have a, yeah, when you're looping, yeah. We, uh, the pipelines has the maximum uh, loop limit. Uh, I don't know about the exact parameter name, but you can set that. Like you can say like, make the loop maximum five times, then like, then stop doing that. Otherwise, like it's gonna eat all of your GPU, CPU, or like your network. So uh, yeah, we have that mechanism. How would you deal with multiple documents that many contradict each other parts in? Uh, Reg would presumably just yell the first answer that occurs during search? Oh, uh, this is a very LLM specific question. Uh, and it also depends on the order of the documents that you provide in the prompt. So if your LLM is... Uh, as a good one, let's say, it can understand that, okay, I found two like contradicting answer in this in the provided 
like comp in the provided documents, maybe like, uh, this is my opinion, but I'm not sure. But if your LLM is not maybe very that good, uh, then it will say, the b it will output the first thing that you found. So this is a very LLM specific question. And it also depends mainly on your prompt, like how you prompt, how you use your prompt. If you say that, oh, there might be some contradicting opinions, and th when that's the case, do that or do this. So this, yeah, this is a very prompt engineering related question. <laughs> <laughs> Can you use the conditional routing to build a multi index reg? What index reg? Multi. Multi. Pulse. Multi. I don't know that word. <laughs> uh, several. Several index. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, for multiple file types, right? Index reg uh, means multiple files. Oh, yeah, sorry. So you want to index to different indexes, or do you want to get data from different indexes? Like which way? So you use the LLM first to basically select which index, and then you use the conditional routing to go to like basically do a reaction. Yes. Yeah. You would need to change your pipeline a little bit for that. So first, what you would do is to get the query, then the prompt builder, then the generator, and then the generator can decide like, okay, I need to go. I need to go to. Notion for this, or I need to go to the Elasticsearch index for this, and then your know, conditional router can help you direct the data uh, to which branch you want to. And then you would be doing the retrieval and then the generation again. So, but yeah, that's possible, definitely. Is there any support for automatic building relevant queries to document store slash graphdb? That question, sorry. <laughs> is there any support for automatic building relevant queries to document store or GraphDB? Oh, like automatically generating queries. Yeah. The way it's very to receive information from a document store, or you want to apply a query against it, right? So you can ask LLM to build that query, but is, is, is there any other way? Mm, I don't know about that use case. Maybe I got this question wrong. But we can have a discussion right after this, so I'm happy to check that out. It, it seems like interesting. Yeah. Last question, because gosh, this is harder than a test. <laughs> and what are the ben uh, da, 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 oh, where was it? Is it possible to control the overall duration of the pipeline? Oh, we have tracing for that, if you want to, and we have tracing and monitoring support for that. Of course, it's not something that you would do haystack, but by using the other tools. Um, so yeah, I would say that it's possible. Um, yeah, but you would need to, I think that the tool name, oh, okay, this is not my exact area, so I don't remember the tools, but if you check the haystack documentation, uh, you'll see how we have a section for that, that you can, find the tool integrations for this type of monitoring and tracing. Thank you very much. So let's follow the discussion in Discord or in the hallways.